In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his Passion and Resurrection, for it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that, being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he, went, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, Why are you doing this? Reply, the master has need of it, and will send it back and will and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found the coat tethered at the gate outside on the street and untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him, as well as those following, kept crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest, the gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers, like the crowd who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. Please join in singing number 366, All Glory, Loud, and Honor, number 366.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Let us be seated now and be attentive to the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. And for the reading of the Passion, if you would turn in your hymnals to number 898B, and if the congregation could come in on the part labeled C for crowd. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time, so the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not during the festival, for fear that they may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany, reclining at table, in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly genuine spikenard, she broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good to them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. 
She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him wherever he enters. Say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a, a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he fallen them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test, for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough, the hour has come. 
Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, He came and immediately went over to him and said, and he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave fault witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and with days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, But he was silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that the high priest tore his garments and said, They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, you too were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again he denied it. A little later, the bystander said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and to swear. And immediately, a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. 
He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder and rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, for he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, They only shouted the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple and, weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! <clears throat> and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him outside to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right, one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, uh -huh. you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Please kneel.
The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James, and son of Joses, and Solomon. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. You may be seated. This week, and as we celebrate Palm Sunday, of course, the beginning of Holy Week, and we have an opportunity to reflect on our Lord's Passion, and we will do so once again uh, this coming week in the Triduum on Good Friday, and really an opportunity for us to really step back, pause, and think of what Christ has done for us uh, through his uh, cross, and then, of course, through his resurrection, um, that is, uh, you know, our salvation. And one of the things, like especially on Palm Sunday, you see a contrast. Think of the gospel that was proclaimed back before we had the procession with palms and what we have just heard in the gospel that has been proclaimed. And really, we see how fickle human nature truly is. We go from Hosanna, you know, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, to all of a sudden saying, crucify him, give us Barabbas. And I wish I could say in our modern day and age, things would have changed, but I'm sorry to say I don't think so. Uh, still in our modern day and age, we still say, give us Barabbas, or we still reject our Lord. And not, uh, you know, in a sense of physically being there, but really when you think about it, Every time we commit a sin, every time we do something the gospel tells us not to do, it's like saying, give us Barabbas, crucify him. And even I'm sure if our Lord were walking among us in our modern day and age, people would still find, just like in the days of old, they would still find a reason to put him to death some way. This man is too much for us. We have to get rid of him. And yet, when we look at what our Lord did, has done, he has given us an example. Not only has he won our, our salvation, but also remember in the gospel, even before this, he says, if you wish to be my disciple, you must pick up your cross daily and follow after me. And that's something for us to think about. How are we in handling the crosses of our own lives, whatever they may be on whatever level? And many times we want to take the easy way out of things, or if something is not convenient, we want, uh, we want to, to get rid of it. We don't really understand the cross and the meaning of suffering that can be redemptive if we unite it to the cross of our Lord. 
I had a professor in seminary many years ago who summed it up and put it well that there is no Easter Sunday without Good Friday. And that is to, if we wish to experience that salvation, we have to, as our Lord says, where the master is, there his disciples will be. We too have to pick up our cross and follow after, after our Lord, not seeking to take the easy way out, but really following our Lord. And when we encounter that cross in prayer, united to our Lord's cross, that it may be redemptive for us and for, for all around us. And as I think about someone who really understood the meaning of the cross and of redemptive suffering, I often think back, um, St. Pope John Paul II, he was the pontiff for many years of, of my life. And as you might recall in those, uh, that last year, his last days when his Parkinson's had really, you know, uh, amped up into full speed. And and even then, he was offering that up and was a shepherd to the end. And I can remember many people criticizing him. Why doesn't this old man just retire and blah, 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 blah. But he knew and he understood the cross. And I often, you know, wonder and think of the graces that were heaped upon the church as a result of his offering that up as the supreme shepherd. And so for you and for me, in the crosses of our own lives at this time, what is our response to that or suffering? Do we seek to avoid it at all cost? Or do we see it as an opportunity to unite it to the sufferings of our Lord, that it may indeed be redemptive and productive, not only for us, but for uh, all of humanity? So may our prayer be that as we reflect on our Lord's example, that we may follow it more faithfully, and also that having done so, that just as we have, sh have uh, had a share in the sufferings of our Lord, so too we may experience the joy of his resurrection. Together, let us profess the faith of our baptism. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And mindful that God hears our prayers, let us now offer our petitions. that the Holy Spirit may sanctify the church in her observances of this solemn week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's exaltation in the name of Jesus may bring people of all nations to their knees. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may not abandon the distressed, the dying, 
or those sentenced to death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus may journey together with us through experiences of loss and sacrifice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died may enter the heavenly Jerusalem, especially Richard Wiener, Odette Hooker, and Richard Tenyon, to join the angels and saints in giving glory to God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And together, let us pray our diocesan prayer for vocations. Almighty Father, we beg Thank you for an increase in religious vocations and holy marriages in our diocese. Help us to be generous in our response to your call. Choose from our homes those who are needed for your work and strengthen us with the courage to say yes and to follow you. Help us as a diocese, as a parish, as families to encourage and foster vocations to the priesthood, permanent diaconate, and consecrated life. We commend our prayers to our patroness, Mary, Queen of the Rosary, and ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask that you hear the prayers that we offer before you this day and answer them according to your will, for we make them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing number 383, O Sacred Head Surrounded, number 383. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, Yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, 
And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael, St. Gabriel, St. Raphael, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. And your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you, Cash. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
please join in singing number 719, What Wondrous Love Is This? Number 719. Oh, 
pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us hope for, for, for what we believe, so by his resurrection may you lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. The prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And just a couple quick announcements. Uh, this uh, afternoon, we will be having a communal penance service here from 4 to 5 p.m. We'll be joined by a few other priests. So. If you haven't gone to confession before the Easter season and would like to, now would be a good opportunity. Also, please see the bulletin for our Holy Week and our Easter Mass schedules and services. And then also on April 7th, the Sunday after Easter Sunday is Divine Mercy Sunday. So prepare your heart for Divine Mercy Sunday by praying the Novena, which begins on Good Friday and ends on Divine Mercy Sunday. So the novenas are in the back. And also, if you did not grab a palm on your way in, please, I think there are some at the entrances. Please feel free uh, to, take, <clears throat> to take one. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this year family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And may the Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Please run in singing number 387, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, number 387. <laughs> 